His Majesty would inquire after the nature of their hardship and then proceed to have a look at the actual physical feature of the area which he would use in comparing it with the data he had obtained from the local people earlier. This is an important process because His Majesty always considers the worthiness of his assistance, whether he should render it at all or what type of assistance it should be, how, where, etc. Once he had established the needs and obtained complete data, His Majesty was ready to draw up concrete guidelines for the development or remedial initiatives in consultation was to get to such a place and obtained all data pertaining to the respective area. Even so, there have been instances where the royal initiatives did not develop into projects. Many instances indeed. For example, the people would arise once His Majesty had departed. With his presence, the people were in agreement with almost anything. But when more concrete follow-up action took shape, one would assert his ownership over this piece of land, while others did over the rest. Thus, implementation was hindered. His Majesty would say, we should not proceed without their consent. We can go somewhere else. A lot of work is yet to be tackled. Among the large crowd of people who turned out to greet His Majesty, some proved to be quite a disturbance to the officials who were also in attendance there. Words of caution had been passed on down the line of command of those officials, all the way down to village headman, to the effect that no petition was to be lodged with His Majesty by any of the villagers in the crowd, as the message being petitioned might be perturbing to His Majesty. Any problem at all could be solved among us. Let us talk it out locally. Most often, it was something along this line. The king quietly told me, please do not stand in the way if the people want to hand me a petition. No need to hold them back because, if you do, I will never know what the truth is. I am aware that what is being reported to me is not true. The king knew when he was lied to. The light of their life was appearing in person right in front of them. Here was a chance to drive away darkness in which their families had been living. As it happened, they managed to find ways to sidestep the officials and slip the petitions directly to His Majesty. From what I saw, most of them dressed in tatters, wearing shorts, with a piece of loincloth wrapped at the waist. The government people never took any notice of them. When the king came to the spot where they were waiting, they would just pull out the document concealed somewhere in their cloths and handed it over to him. Of course, no one dared to interrupt. That was how it happened most times. Suddenly, a high-ranking official approached me, asking what I was writing. I said I was writing a petition for the king. Some of the officials there, I will not say their names, tried to stop me, saying I could not do that, not in the world. I said, why indeed not? The people had their woes. They still insisted that I would not be allowed to do it. In any case, I was determined, did manage to lodge the petition too. Every royal initiated project constitutes the body of continuous work for His Majesty because he always monitors its progress and keeps abreast of all the problems or outcomes. There were instances where His Majesty repeatedly made inquiries as to why certain projects had not got off the ground. He had a complete set of data with him. So he knew everything, the location, the nature of problems applying there, etc. He kept all our reports, plus his own personal information. He even did some spying. He had his own auditor's unit out on us. Nowadays, the hard work has been passed to Her Majesty the Queen and members of the royal family who make royal visits to the sites of the royal initiated projects development study centers as well as certain remote areas. They constantly report their findings to His Majesty. On Her Majesty's trip, officials from the Irrigation Department had to be in attendance, along with those from the RDPB. After the trip was over, report had to be prepared and submitted to the board. We were told to send the report to Klai Gunwang Palace for his approval. There were indeed cases that the report was returned to us with his comment, arguing that some things were not right, and the corrections. The point is that His Majesty is still hard at work, even though he now resides at Klai Gunwang Palace. I can assure you he is.
2006 is the 60th year under His Majesty the King's reign. The words of righteousness uttered as the first vow of his reign have become fundamental in the morals of the Lord of the Land, who has been revered for his role as a shelter for his subjects, a pillar for the nation. Under his rule, a lot has been learned as to how development work can thrive without the risk of losing harmony and equilibrium. On that day, 60 years ago, the love of his subject managed to hold the sovereign back. Now, more than 20,000 days later, the sovereign is still returning that love to his subjects.